Hey everybody, Logan here. Today, finally got our hands on another new Xbox controller, but this time not from Microsoft, because apparently Microsoft has been pooping those things out so fast. <sighs> We're getting plenty of new controllers, but no new games. Huh. We're not talking about that right now. We're gonna talk about the new Power A Fusion Pro 3. So this just came out, just came out. From my understanding, it hit store shelves today. So I saw it, uh, I was at uh, my local GameStop, I was picking up something else, and I was like, oh, wow, I just saw the really, that's, it's out. So I'm gonna make a video on it. So we're gonna open this up. Uh, I've never had one of the Fusion Pros for the Xbox, I had the previous Fusion Pro, the first one for the Switch. That I've covered before, and I think it was a solid controller. But this, in the vein of, I guess you can call it the Elite Series controller, because it has the detachable sticks and removable. We're going to take a look at this. We're going to test it out, see if it's any good, see how it feels. You know, we're going to run it through all the tests like we normally do in all of my unboxing videos. So first things first, let's hit that intro and then open up this bad boy. Okay, as you can see, this is the Fusion by Power A Fusion Pro 3 wired controller. Now, if we're comparing this to the Elite, which I think we're going to do, the Elite Series 2, it is wireless. This one is wired. So that's a, a big deterrent, but it is significantly cheaper. You're talking about $79.99. As three way trigger locks, uh, four mappable buttons on the back. So as you can see, it's got the four flappy paddles instead of just two, where some of the other enhanced wired controllers only have two mappable buttons. So you have those, the trigger locks in the back, and then the uh, swappable sticks. Comes with a protective case, which is really nice. And as you can see, it says designed for Xbox Series XS, Xbox One, Windows 10, and 11. So yes, for all you people who are always like, but does it work on PC? Watch the video. Yes, it works on PC, but we are not a PC channel, so yeah, we do not cover anything PC here, which if you watch the channel, you understand that. All right, so there's the case. That's a nice case. All right, let's see what we have in here. Okay. Looks like stickers of some sort. Yeah, they're all stickers. Stickers, okay, that's pretty cool. And the instruction manual. So we'll leave that aside just in case. Put that over there and nothing else in the box. We'll put that there, outside. Close that knife to be safe. All right, interesting shape case. Definitely different compared to the rounded uh, style. This is more boxy than the Xbox Elite controller. Okay, which is actually kind of nice. All right, if you look, it has your cables here. Your little sticks are up in there instead of everything being, he being here like the Microsoft ones. So that's where your sticks are. Okay, now one thing I do like about these sticks, they have different textures, depending on what you like. That I like better than this style of texture. But that's pretty nice, I do like that. I I'm glad they gave us the option. And then, okay. Adhesive, nope, Velcro. Your cable is braided. So is it type C? That's the big thing, type C. Yes, okay, so at least we got that. Now, it's very light. It is very, very light. It says it has rumble. Uh, I think the grips here on the front are really nice. It has that, um, that matte suede weird feeling that the Series uh, X Elite controllers have. It's nice. 
that has a rubberized grip. The back is a plastic grip. So we have just like the enhanced series controllers, you have two sets of buttons and that's going to be your program. Just like every one of these, I've done these a million times. You hold this, you press that along with the button that you want to mimic it to. And what I'll, what I mean by that, is we're going to take a look. Well, that's kind of cool that it does it that way. See, you do that. You hold it for three seconds. The light will come on and then pop up, pop up, press the button and then press the back. Okay, so it's a little different here. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold this for two seconds. The light's going to flash. Then you press the button you want assigned. And then you tap the corresponding button that you want on the back. Uh, in order to map it. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty simple. So swappable thumbsticks. That's going to be the, the stick inside itself. You take off the, the magnetic faceplate, which apparently these things are interchangeable. So if you do have other versions of these, I, I haven't seen any. The store didn't have any. But it is magnetic. You take it off and then you swap those. We're going to do that in just a second. And then same thing. Now if you want to reset it, you just hold it for three seconds and then tap the same button again and that'll reset it back to normal. Your trigger locks are going to be just like that, T1, T2, T3. So it's pretty much the same as every single one of their other controllers, which I've covered a bajillion times. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I'll, uh, I'll answer them a little more in depth. But... You've got that right there, the little divot kind of thing, which allows you to pull off the faceplate. Again, just like the, the previous versions. Now this is gonna be the standard look underneath it. This button is for headset volume. You've got your share, you've got your menus uh, buttons, and then your Xbox home button. So here, okay, so they do not light up. There's no lights underneath here, so. That actually feels kind of weird without a faceplate. Now, I do like the fact that it has a standard D-pad instead of the Series X style D-pad. So let's take these out. Um, you have the, the higher sticks. If you look, you're going to get the higher place sticks. And then you have the different texture stick again with the higher stick here. So... I'm not a fan of the higher stick as my primary one. Ooh, I like that. I like the, the taller stick as my aiming. Some people will argue with that. Some people say, hey, do the opposite. It all depends on what you feel is best. There you go. So these are going to be your, your new sticks. These are the two that are replacement, the higher one. And then the, the standard one, which I really like that. I'm, I'm a big fan of the texture that they chose on there. This is concave. This is convex. So I do like that. Otherwise, let's, let's see how the trigger locks feel. Let's go down to trigger lock one. Okay. Ah. Not as big of a difference. It doesn't it, it doesn't feel as big as the Series uh, X Elite controller. So let's take a look at the Elite in comparison really quickly. So what I mean with the texture, you're going to get the same texture here and here. The thing is this has a lot more weight, a lot more girth. It feels more premium, but it costs significantly more. This one is the, let's say it's the budget version of this. So here we do have the, the placements for the back for paddles. These are replaceable. These are not. These are built in. This is wired. This is wireless. When you're adjusting the trigger locks here, there's, there's a big difference. You can feel it. Um, this case has all your, your stuff right here. It has a lot more functionality but you're also looking at about a hundred dollars more. 
this one is a pro on a budget. So it's a, think about it this way. Say you're watching wrestling, right? Let, let's say WWE. This is main roster material. This will show up on Raw. This will show up on NXT. Make any sense? Or I'm not going to go as far as AEW Dark. But yeah, Dark Elevation? No. <laughs> no, it's a def definitely the, the NXT version of the controller. Um, it just feels a little too cheap for the 80 bucks. You can get a lot more for a lot more bang for your buck. So let's plug this in and uh, test it out. Okie dokie. So as you can see right here, this is the, the cable. It's got the little tie on it. I decided to boot up Halo Reach. Um, if it lets me skip, what I just I just want to feel the controls. Don't you hate it when a game says, oh, quick start, but it makes you watch the, the cutscene. There we go. Skip it. I've already beaten this game multiple times. I don't care about the difficulty. I don't care what it's on. I just want to test the controller. Oh, God. Come, come on, come on. All right, just, just, just let me go. Let me go. Let me go. So we're going to see how this kind of feels. I, I think the best thing to always check these with, because these controls are really designed for um, FPS games. Do you like these settings? Yes, I already beat this. Why are they making me go back to the beginning? So, just I, I just want to test it out. I just want to test it out. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm not trying to shoot you. Just put me down. 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 All right. Stick feels nice. Hmm. Ah, uh, okay. Feels a bit of a delay. Okay, that's full. Let's go. Uh, okay, that's one thing I don't like there because I like in the Xbox where you can just press down. This one you have to... Go back and forth. Okay. Now, one thing it does have is the rumble and the triggers, which is pretty good, but it feels cheap. Um, it's actually more annoying. Trigger lock there. Okay. Everything feels fine. Let's hit the button on the back. So, I'm going to do the program. Hit the button on the back. Three seconds. It's flashing. Now, I'm going to map the punch to this. That's the one I, I pressed right there. I'm sorry. I don't know if you can see it. I'm pressing it, and it works. So the mapping is fairly simple. It's fairly easy. The controller seems to be pretty much responsive. I There's a delay in the, in the stick. Um... I, I don't know if I can recommend that. I don't know if it's just mine, but I can feel it. It doesn't, it may not look like it. I don't know if you can see the difference, but there's definitely a delay. You press it, then you move instead of moving. It's minute enough where it might cost you in multiplayer. I can't recommend this. If you're playing multiplayer, I think if you want a a value option i think it's fantastic overall that's the only thing that's going to bother me if you're looking competitive i can feel a bit of a difference i don't like that that's just me but if you're just using it to play um any first person shooter outside of highly competitive i think you'll be fine with this overall i would probably give this a b minus mainly because of that i would say it would have been a very great option for the price if i didn't have it hey it might just be the one i've got but i that's my only complaint but otherwise i think this controller's just fine uh if you can get it on sale 
that's probably what you want to do. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share this video. Uh, remember to turn the bell on for notifications so you can see episodes of Ready to Start Podcast. Next one coming out tomorrow with Jay, Drunk3PO from Geeks and Gamers. And you can watch our uh, previous one with RGT85. Thank you guys so much. Like what I would say. Be legendary. Thanks again.